Hey babes, Tara C Music here. I want to go over and talk about money and taxes because that's just the kind of mood I'm into today, apparently. Um, so let's just kind of go briefly over taxes, especially when you are a musician, you are self-employed. There are a lot of things that you should know if you are getting any type of income because guess what? If you make income, you are subject to taxes. Isn't that awesome? So we've got different types of taxes here. We have um, income tax, and then we have self-employment tax, okay? So we have uh, also subdivisions between income tax. We have state income tax, as well as federal income tax. Okay, so let's kind of go over that quickly. So the state income tax, the rate varies per state. Some states do not even have state income tax, which is actually true for the state that I live in, which is nice, don't have to worry about that. Um, but definitely check your state uh, website um, and hopefully there should be some information on the tax rates there. Uh, then for the income tax for the federal level, we've got let me do this here. So this is for tax year 2020, okay? So they kind of prorate it um, based on how much you make. So um, the lowest rate is 10%, okay, for your tax. That's for incomes of single individuals who make $9,875 or less, okay? And then there's obviously this for married couples. Um, and then it kind of scales up based on um, how much more you make above that uh, minimum threshold, okay? So, you need to know that you owe that. This is for US um, citizens, obviously, um, but you need to know that you owe that, okay? No matter what you do. Um, then we have another thing called self-employment tax. Um, also differs by state, I believe. I am not a CPA, not an accountant. My dad is an accountant, but I am not. So, um, I, you know, talked to him very briefly before doing this. Um, but yeah, so self-employment tax, um, differs per state. California, I think it's like close to 30%. Um, in my state, I believe it's somewhere around 15, maybe a little bit less than 15. Um, so again, you are liable and responsible for paying those taxes. So, what I do um, is I actually take out that, like I do the 15%, so I, I just take out 15% no matter what. So any type of income that I get, um, I just automatically, I will take 15% of it and I will put it away into a different account. Um, just to separate it from my usual income and just so that I have that money ready for when I have to pay the taxes. Um, so, um, one note, the 15% self-employment tax um, and I believe the regular federal income tax as well. Um, I know for sure the self-employment ta tax, but um, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but this is after you take deductions or you take off the expenses. So after you factor in those deductions, that's what's going to be taxed at that, uh, whatever rate it is. So 15% for me. Um, I've just been doing 15% straight off the bat. So if I get a hundred bucks, I'm taking $15 of that and putting it into a different uh, checking account or well, it's a savings account. I put it into a different account and I just leave it there. So it's all reserved, it's all set for when I actually have to pay those taxes. Um, what I would suggest if you want to make sure that you have that money kind of work for you a little bit, um, put it into a savings account that has a bit of a higher interest rate, um, just so that it's just not sitting there and kind of collecting dust, right? You still want that money to work for you in some sense. So putting it into some kind of savings account that has a bit of a higher interest rate will definitely help um, for sure. Um, so what I've been doing, um, is I've been doing 15% for the self-employment tax, then I do 30% for savings, just regular savings, like if, God forbid, something happens to me and I can't work for a few months, I need to make sure I have enough money to live on still. So I put 30% into my savings and then the rest for now is just kind of play money. 
I know a lot of people kind of do like a 30, 40, 30 rule, I believe. Um, there's, there's like a bunch of different, um, uh, I guess, options and ways to do this. Um, but for now, I'm just trying to, because I'm still starting out with all this, I'm just trying to at least cover the basics, right? So have the 15% into the, um, the self-employment tax, 30% into my savings then the rest I get to just do whatever I want with. Um, the actual federal income tax, I haven't really been um, super diligent on just because I recently came back from South Korea. And so for two years, I didn't have to worry about paying federal tax um, because there's a treaty between the US and South Korea that allows that income that I received in South Korea to be excluded from taxes. And I didn't make enough money off of my music to even qualify to pay taxes um, for uh, 2019. So like, yeah. <laughs> Starting 2020 though, I yeah I should probably be a little bit more diligent because once I reach that threshold, then I'll have to you know I'll have to pay some taxes. So um, yeah, make sure that you are aware of that. Now, if you are outside of the U.S., because I know quite a lot of you are, um, you are still obligated to pay taxes for your income if you receive it from the U.S. So examples. Distro Kid, Sound Drop, etc. Okay, so there is a thing going around. Someone made a YouTube video talking about how Distro Kid stole his money. Now, I understand both sides. Distro Kid did not tell anyone that they were going to start withholding money. Is it their responsibility to tell you? No, not really because you should know the taxes, no matter what, okay? If you are living in a different country and you get your income from the US, it is subject to US income tax, okay? So, um, there is something that you can fill out. There is a form. Um, it is the W8BEN, okay? This, I got this from my dad. <laughs> um, you can fill out that form and that will tell the companies, whatever companies that you're working with that are US based, tell them not to withhold the money. Okay, so they will still, they'll send you 100% of the money that you know, you earn, but you are still responsible for remitting those taxes. You're still responsible for paying those taxes yourself. Okay, now what's kind of nice though, is if you check um, on probably on the IRS website, I'm not positive, but um, there are a bunch of tax treaties between the US and different countries, okay? If there is a tax treaty between US and your country, usually that's for a lower tax rate, okay? So if you can claim that, then that means you won't be paying the, um, I believe the standard is a 30% withholding. So if you have a tax treaty, your country has one with the US for like 15% or 10%, you can claim that. So you're only paying that amount instead of having the companies withhold the full 30. You know what I mean? Um, so I would look into that. If your country does not have a tax treaty or anything like that with the US, which is true with Brazil, um, which is where this YouTuber is from. Um, unfortunately, you are kind of out of luck. Um, you still have to pay that full 30%. So whether the company withholds it or whether you claim that you want to take that responsibility yourself, you still have to pay that 30% uh, for the taxes, okay? So, there's a lot that I could say about this, but I think I'll just stop there in terms of the taxes um, because I don't want people coming for me. <laughs> but yeah, maybe I've just been a little bit more knowledgeable than the average uh, person when it comes to self-employment tax and just taxes in general because I live in a household like my dad is a CPA. So I ask him stuff all the time and he does my taxes. And so we go through it together. Um, so I'm very fortunate that I have someone like just so easily accessible that I can talk to about stuff. Um, but yeah, like no matter what, you should always think of your income as not being 100%. If you get $100, you didn't actually get a hundred dollars. Sorry to say you didn't like part of that's going to go to taxes sooner or later. So the sooner you shift that mindset 
and think, okay, so I got a hundred dollar check, but I'm really only going to get like 70, maybe 70 bucks out of that. Um, just maybe do 30% for taxes total. I mean, it's totally up to you depending on your state and depending on just like the tax rules and things like that, the brackets. So um, always think that you are actually taking home less than what that check says, okay? That'll just do you so many favors later on. So you don't get frustrated and you're not like, you know, you don't think like, why is this happening? You know, um, so yeah, hopefully, don't come for me, but like hopefully that kind of helps a little bit like the sooner that you have that kind of mindset The better off you'll be just trust me on this. Okay now I do want to kind of go over some income streams and income sources for musicians next um, So I'm kind of just doing this off the top of my head. So I apologize. <laughs> I'm not like super planned out but um, I will kind of go through the different types of um, just income sources that you can do as a musician. So obviously you've got like YouTube, right? Make a video. If you have um, the partner like enabled and or have like a MCN, uh, then you'd be able to make some money from the ad revenue, right? Um, from ads running on your videos. So that's one way you can get money from YouTube doing that. Um, or through like your MCN, which might like kind of help manage your channel and, you know, answer any questions you might have, you know, stuff like that. Um, so that's one. Uh, you can also distribute your music to online platforms. So I use SoundDrop almost exclusively. Um, and they are absolutely great. They don't take any kind of monthly or yearly fees or anything like that. It's just a 15% uh, revenue share uh, that they do. And for covers, they charge $9.99 per license. Um, so just keep that in mind. But that's a one-time payment, which is really, really nice. It's just, you just pay that $9.99 and then your license is set. You're all, you're all good. You don't have to pay per year or anything like that. It's just a one-time fee, which is really nice. Um, so I use SoundDrop. I also have a Patreon, which a lot of musicians I do know also have Patreon. If you don't, I would seriously look into um, opening a, an account and making it like a page for yourself um, so that people can uh, pledge you and support you um, if you already have an existing fan base. Unfortunately, you can't really find new people to support and find a fan base on Patreon. It's more of once you have an established fan base, then those people who really like your work and really want to support you will come over and pledge to you on Patreon. So I would look into that. We also have Twitch, which you can get subscriptions. So I think you get $2.50 per subscription. Um, for affiliate, when you're a partner, you get more. I'm not sure how much more it is because um, I'm not a partner, I'm an affiliate. So you can get subscriptions um, and then you can also get people who donate to you um, like through bits. So they like cheer a certain amount and you can get that as well through Twitch, um, things like that. So that's another possible thing. If you like streaming, you like talking, you like gaming, you know, you like to kind of chat with your, your fans and just your audience and kind of engage with them. It's a really good opportunity and a really good website to do so. Um, so I would look into that. And then we have just straight up donations. So like through PayPal, um, again, all of these, you have to think they're going to get taxed on these. Okay. So you got the regular donations through PayPal. Um, what else do we have? We have like Bandcamp. So if you have any original music on Bandcamp or if you have the license, you can, um, you also put covers on there, but that kind of depends because the Bandcamp license is a little bit different than regular distribution. So I would, um, just take note of that, but you can do Bandcamp as well. Get some money from that. Um, what else am I missing here? Okay. So we have commissions or session work, right? You can always market yourself and advertise yourself to do session recording um, or do any kind of commission work. So commission, you know, people pay you to lay down vocals for their, their song or people pay you to make instrumentals, which actually has happened. Um, I've actually been very fortunate to work with Caleb Hiles a few times uh, to commission. He's commissioned me to make some instrumentals for his covers. Um, 
and then in again session work you can do session recording session vocals violin trumpet whatever instrument you play um, you can do that as well i also get some money from materia collective because i am a part of materia collective i've been trying to get back into creating stuff for um, materia so you can get some money from that um, and then we have some other extras here so we have music lessons. So if you do private lessons, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, in person, or you know, during this time, probably online through Skype or Zoom, whatever the heck um, works for you. Um, so you can also input those in there. Um, and I also do lessons uh, through two different websites. I go through Lesson Face and I go through Wisent. And those two websites, they also take um, like a bit of a revenue share, profit share, um, but they also kind of provide you with students or potential students, which is really nice. Um, so that's also a really good one. If you are more into like the teaching instructor type, I would definitely look into those because you can make some really nice and stable money from doing that. Um, there's also tutoring. You can do tutoring through Chegg, through TutorMe. I would recommend Chegg though, because Chegg's um, hourly rate is better. Um, I had been doing Chegg for years actually, until I started wanting to do private music lessons, and that's why I kind of switched over to Wisent and Lesson Face. But Chegg also exists if you want to tutor people, if you kind of remember stuff from your college days, still have your notes, you might be able to help people out and you get a little extra money from that. So that's a another possibility. Um, again, these are all still self-employed. Even if you're an independent contractor, you're still self-employed. So these are all still subject to tax. Um, then we've got a couple more. Sound Exchange is the website and they collect royalties that, again, SoundDrop um, does not collect because it's under a different category, like a subcategory of streaming. So think of Pandora. I believe Pandora you don't really have a choice of what you're listening to. It's just kind of more like a radio type thing. So those kinds of streams are actually separate from the regular streams and um, income that you get from SoundDrop. So make sure you sign up to SoundExchange because there are is there probably is some money set aside for you. Um, and you can post all of your originals and also all of your covers because these royalties are for the sound recording. You don't have to be the composer, okay, for t for these royalties. As long as you own the sound recording, then you're good, okay? So look into that. We also have a PRO, right? Performance Rights Organization, which I am with BMI. So these are when you are the actual composer of the work. Okay, but you can get some money from that with, if anyone plays your composition or, you know, does a performance of it, you're owed royalties. You were supposed to get money. Um, so if you're not with a PRO, you should probably get with one, <laughs> especially if you're considering composing at some time in the future, um, which I think most of us are. Um, so definitely get on that. US has ASCAP or BMI. Um, Canada has their own. I think there's only one in Canada. I think Germany has one. So double check with your country. There usually is at least one PRO that you can choose um, and make sure that you're set up with that. And then we have merchandise. So I have Teespring. So I've got some t-shirts and some um, like leggings, hoodies, mugs, stickers, um, I even started doing face masks as well. If anyone wants to sport my logo on a face mask, it's available. Um, but yeah, that money as well will count towards taxes and counts towards your income, right? So I think these are all the ones that I have. Um, so I'm actually gonna pull over to a different scene and kind of show you a template of my um, music like profits and costs and expenses. Um, for 2020. So I kind of set it up like this. You don't have to do it like this at all. Just do what works for you. But this as just an example, okay? I don't have any amounts in here, but um, I have every single month, okay? Because most of these I get paid once a month. So it's just easier for me to just put in those amounts once a month, okay? So again, we have SoundDrop, we have Twitch, Patreon, DistroKid. Yes, I am still part of DistroKid. Don't come for me. I'm still part of DistroKid. 
Um, but yeah, we have that. We have the commission session work, donation, screen wave. Okay, that's the MCN for my YouTube channel. That's who I'm partnered with. Okay, so this is basically YouTube ad revenue. Okay, then we got material collective, got Bandcamp, music lessons, website. I actually don't think I touched on that. If you have a website and you're selling sheet music or selling, you know, merchandise on your website, that'll count as well. Um, then I've got these two highlighted in blue because these ones go straight into my bank account, so they don't go into my PayPal. Um, so I kind of count them a little bit differently, but I still put the amounts here just so I have an idea of my total income um, from my music and self-employment in general. Um, then we've got the PRO, BMI, we got the Royalty Sound Exchange, um, Merchandise, Teespring, and then I have Other here, okay? And then you can always do, you know, some so, yep, we can do that, okay? So you sum it all up, and then it'll show a nice little amount here, okay? I also do the same thing here, sum of all of these, so I know how much each revenue source or income source, income stream, I know how much I got from each source um, in the year, which is also kind of telling and nice to have that as well, because if you're kind of thinking, oh, you know, I'm not making as much money off of such and such, maybe, I should think about dropping it and finding something else that might make me more money, okay? Um, so I think that's very important. Then we've got the costs here, okay? So I pay monthly for Adobe Creative Cloud, which is $32.39, you know, that's after tax. Um, so that's every single month, so usually this is just filled out completely every single month with the $32.39. Um, then Patreon pledges, although these do not count as expenses, I still take it out of this amount here. Um, so because Patreon deducts the pledge amount from my total like income, um, I basically put the total income here minus the Patreon pledges um, so that I get the amount that you know, I actually see in my bank account. <laughs> um, but the pledges are not really um, expenses. So I would just be careful with that. Don't count them as expenses because they're not, you're choosing to pledge to other people, right? So it has nothing to do with your business. Um, I just like to include it just to make things a little bit simpler for me. Then we've got the sound drop licensing, the district kid licensing as well. Um, music related purchase, so any software, hardware, anything like that, even my straightener I claimed um, because when do I straighten this? For videos. <laughs> That's literally the only time that I straighten this really, except for maybe some special events here and there. But like 95% of the time, if I use that straightener, it's for a YouTube video. So that you can claim as an expense, okay? Um, anything like that. Makeup as well can count. Okay, which I actually need to start claiming. Um, what else do we have? Rent, okay. If you're living and paying rent, right? If you're making your music in your bedroom, that can count as an expense because you were paying to make music in this space, right? So um, I pay rent. I know I live with my parents, but I pay rent. So I can count that as well as an expense. Phone bill. We all have phones. Your phone bill can also be deducted and counted as an expense because I use my phone, again, like 95% of the time, I use it for something music related, business related, okay? Phone bill, that can count for sure as well. Um, then copyright office, if you pay anything for um, getting just anything copyrighted, basically. Um, getting new songs copyrighted, um, getting a logo copyrighted, things like that. That will count as well as an expense for your business. Then I have other here. Every so often I do have some that don't fit these categories and I'll put them in here. Um, and then we've got fees. So I also take into account fees. So any PayPal fees that may come out of my income, I will put it in there. Any transfer fees, bank fees, um, so for Patreon, there's a 25 cent bank fee, um, which if you think, okay, it's 25 cents versus maybe like a dollar or something like that for PayPal, um, depending on how much income you actually get from Patreon. But if you add that up over time, okay, PayPal's max fee that they can charge you is $20, okay? $20 a month times 12, Okay, 12 months, right, in a year. 
versus 25 cents a month times 12. Okay, so that can make a huge difference. So that's actually why I switched from PayPal to um, having it transferred to my bank account and then I manually transfer it to my PayPal. Um, so definitely look into that because if you don't mind having it sent to your bank account, you're saving so much money by doing that instead of using PayPal. PayPal's more convenient, yes, but PayPal can also charge you up to $20 per Patreon, you know, like per, per anything, anything that you get through PayPal, they can charge up to $20 for a fee, depending on how much that amount actually is. So um, yeah, avoid unnecessary fees if possible, because that will also help you a lot in saving money and making sure that you are stepping up every single year in terms of your income. Um, but yeah, I think there's one more thing that I want to show you. Now, Song Trader, I just recently got into. A uh, huge thanks to Zircon. He made a video on Impact Soundworks YouTube talking about all the different uh, revenue income sources for musicians. And he mentioned um, music licensing, um, which I found Song Trader. I think I went to some, uh, some article that recommended it for people who are just starting out with licensing their music. So this is if you have original music, okay? So original compositions, like I have my piano EP, I also have um, Stay, and I'm working on more electronic originals, okay? Any of those original things that you own the rights to, you can actually license that music out. People will pay you a pretty penny to use that music in their projects, okay? Which I think is amazing. Um, it's, it, yeah, it's hard to actually get licensed, I think. Um, I've only been doing this for maybe two months. Um, I haven't gotten anything licensed yet, but I also don't have a lot of original compositions. So if you're someone who has a ton of originals and you just made a bunch of demos, heck, upload them to Song Trader, make an account, upload all of your stuff, and then start um, submitting music to all of these um, listings that want certain types of music. They have it uh, sorted by genre and um, whether or not they want vocals, if they want male vocals or female vocals, or if they just want instrumental. They also usually have a reference track that you can listen to. And if you have something that sounds similar to that, then you know that you have a pretty good shot of um, getting at least like shortlisted um, for actually being licensed. So I would definitely look into that. It's been really interesting to see some of the things that they have. So I think that's a really cool um, option for people who are looking just to get a little extra cash and not really do a ton more work. Um, so yeah, I think I've rambled on long enough. <laughs> so I'm going to let you guys go, but definitely I would recommend checking out Tina Guo. Um, she's made some YouTube videos and also Facebook videos uh, about taxes and about just making money as a musician, um, just an independent contractor. Um, so definitely check out her stuff. That's kind of what got me started with all of this. Um, you can also check out Subversive Asset. He also made a video kind of talking about the whole DistroKid thing. Um, and basically his points are sh like right on. I, my dad and I listened to it together and my dad was nodding to everything that Subversive Asset was saying. So um, that's at least a good starting point if you're kind of unsure about all of this. Um, and I know a lot of the lingo is kind of uh, confusing, but um, I think it's still very important for you to know um, about the taxes and about how much money you're actually getting whenever you receive a check or some kind of income from someone. Okay, so I really hope that that helps you all. I'm sorry for talking so much, <laughs> but I appreciate you guys sticking with me and I will have a video out soon, I promise. It's been a little hard with how things are nowadays, but I'm trying to get back into making music. So expect a cover from me soon. Um, and I think that is it for today. I will see you in the next video. Bye.